Hello everyone, it's Suetonia here. Recently, CCP decided to give a small boost to all of the combat interceptors in the game, by mostly increasing the damage and giving a small CPU tweak to the Crusader and the Tyrannus. So I thought I would fly them all a bit and give you my impressions. Today, I'm going back to take a look at the Claw. The Claw actually hasn't changed all too much and I'm actually using almost the exact same fit I flew 3-4 to four years ago, which was the last time I really flew the Claw. Uh, my fit mostly focuses on getting a good amount of buffer and damage. My fit uses 3 200mm autocannons in the highs and a small Nos Nosferatu. The Nos is very important I think because the base capacitor on the Claw is really terrible and you need it to be able to get off the rest of your small ancillary armor repair charges and it also helps quite a bit in uh, frigate duels by keeping your opponent capped out a little. I use a restrained micro warp drive for the lower sick penalty when MWDing and the lower cap penalty which again is very important. A faint scope warp scrambler, it's the best scrambler that we can fit. Tech 2 gyro stabler serve for more damage. The combination of the named damage control and the Imperial Navy 200mm plate gives you a decent amount of buffer tank so you can get off your small ancillary armor repair charges. And the rigs I'm using is just a Tech 2 rate of fire rig for as much damage as possible and the ambit extension to help uh, give a bit more protection and I carry all of the normal ammunitions that you would carry with uh, order cannons which are hail, barrage, phase plasma, EMP and fusion and I'd recommend carrying about 125 nanite repair paste. The main strengths of the claw are that it's quite fast while still having decent brawling stats so it's actually very good at killing kiting ships like Garmas, Retributions, Wolfs and Slices for example it's also heavily underestimated because most players have only ever used the Chlorine and Tosis Warfare style fits which have zero tank and they die to a light breeze so they expect it to be a lot worse than it actually is. Uh, the weaknesses of the Chlor are the fact that it has no range control options with two mid slots and the capacitor on it is really terrible if you aren't enraged to use the Nosferatu so you have a horrible time against Gram Kiters and you have no real way to extract from a fight unlike other options like a dual prop Tyrannus or something. Despite the damage buff which is really nice I still think that the Republic Fleet Fire Tail offers you more bang for the buck and it doesn't have the same weaknesses as the Claw has either. With that being said though let's jump in and take a look at a few fights that I had recently with the Claw. So this is an arranged 1v1 with another interceptor, Ron uh, USMC from Test is flying the Tyrannus in this case and it isn't the uh, the flown the, the exact best way because uh, Ron isn't very experienced with interceptors but I kind of want to show you what my sort of strategy is when trying to fight against the, uh, a Tyrannus so I'm deliberately trying to like click around him and then click through him so that when we both mut end up mutually scramming each other the inertia will take me out of out of scram range again and so that way I can get a bunch of damage in on him while his blasters will not be able to uh, reach me at range and I want to make it so that uh, he has to uh, spend a lot of time boarding against me you can see here that it really uh, you can really see it take place there right like I co just coast through his scram that way and end up uh, outside scram range again and that way I'm just keeping up the pressure on him without actually uh, committing. Uh, Tyrannus will always be able to uh, c to gain on you. Uh, a web Tyrannus is actually a lot easier to deal with than a uh, than a dual prop Tyrannus. Uh, a Tyrannus will either catch up to you slowly with a web or if it has dual prop it will catch up uh, uh, quite a bit faster actually. It'll, it, while a Tyrannus is heating AB I think it gains on you about one kilometer a second. I also uh, do not load Barrage, I have Fusion loaded and that's exactly what you want. It, you gotta know that a Tyrannus is gonna gain on you and if it does have dual prop it is gonna be able to go under your tracking if you have Barrage loaded. And with all the cannons you cannot afford to have a 10 second reload in a fight or you're 100% done. So I recommend always uh, loading Fusion against a Tyrannus or anything that you think might have dual prop. Always use faction ammo instead of barrage, even though your instinct might be to load barrage versus a blaster ship. This next fight is versus a crow, and a lot of people ask me how I get fights, and most of the time you just want to be like very visible in local, so just hang around like structures. I also love the CCP increased the range of the Anspax jump gates to 500 kilometers because I probably wouldn't have got this fight otherwise. 
I was just bouncing between the answer blacks and messing around on tests, keep star grid, and this guy undocked a crow and decided to go for me. This is where the claw is actually really good. I think the claw is really strong at running down kiting ships like Garmas and crows, etc. So here I'm just trying to make sure that I'm further than 500 kilometers from the keep star, which I am, just so you know you don't get killed by the very balanced 5 million alpha strike module that hits sub capital ships. But here he's just kind of charging right into me. There isn't really any skill here, really. Just, it's pretty cool that, you know, like you can just run people down like this in something like Claw. It's very, it's very good at catching out Garmas. Or other ships that try to kite you, like Imperial Navy Slicers, because it's so, because you're a lot faster than them. Even just uh, MWD on, you go uh, faster than a double nano slicer. And a lot of slicers and garmers, etc., will try to go for you because normally they expect the interceptor to be paper thin. It's normally like their prime target. But yeah, here's just, you know, a generic crow kill. So this is a uh, another arranged 1v1 with uh, Ron USMC. This time he's in a Sentinel. It's a bit of a weird Sentinel fit though because he has a, an afterburner only fit. So I assumed he was going to be like AB Scram, like Injector TD or something. I, I don't I didn't ac exactly know his fit. Turns out he was like AB Scram like Shield Extender involved. But that's fine. It doesn't really change the tactics here. So I see that he has afterburner only. I really don't want to burn into him because I know I, I need to start the fight almost on top of him. So I need to like land pretty close to him. I think as long as I land within 30 kilometers, I as long as I can get like one MWD cycle off right before he needs me. And since my ship goes just under 4k a second with heated MWD, when you take like agility into account, like I can probably travel 30 kilometers in one MWD cycle. And then get the scram off. Here I land about 70 kilometers away from him, so I'm just trying to like assess my options. So I see he has Warrior 2 Zal, which are pretty bad for me. I, I don't think I can really defang a Sentinel. I think my main thing here is to try and rush him. Uh, I, I'm looking like where he is relative to the sun, and I'm burning away here to see if maybe I can whoop to the sun and land on top of him. Again, I really want to try and surprise him and start the fight as close as possible here, so I'm mostly just looking for like an angle, uh, ideally to start the fight as close as possible. Because if he uh, if he has long point AB or something, and then he nudes me out of 20k, and then just permanently ABs around the 20k while keeping me capped dead, like there's absolutely nothing I can do, right? I guess the Sentinel isn't really that threatening to a claw actually, because you do have a a tracking bonus, and if he just puts warriors on you and kites your 20k, you can still use your auto cannons in order to be able to, uh, you can just defang him, right? I guess it's more of a threat if he has friends or something. So I'm not actually too worried about a sentinel in a claw, even though a sentinel is uh, very good at killing frigates normally. And again, I'm, I'm just looking for, for options here to see if I can land on top of him. Again, I'm just assessing my options, trying to see what he's trying to do. He is in an afterburner only fit, so again, I am assuming like he's in some weird uh, fit that's like tailored uh, to win a 1v1 with me. Here I, again, I land 84 kilometers away, which isn't really great. So again, I'm kind of assessing my options and looking where I am. You can see I made a bookmark, uh, sort of in, I have a bookmark sort of in line where he is. So I'm thinking if I warp at a, if I warp to that bookmark and walk back, I can probably land pretty close to him. He was 75 from where I was, so I'm thinking, you know, if I go back at, at 70, I should land pretty close to him. So that's that's my main uh, my main plan here. I know this might not be too interesting for some people, but I think, you know, how you set up the fights is something that's missing from a lot of other PvP videos. So again, I'm just... All we're doing here is we're trying to find just a situation where we land pretty close to him and again it, it works out pretty well here. I land 30k from him which is very acceptable to me. Especially as he was sort of changing directions. And you can see here that I you know I'm able to get on top of him before uh he really nudes me off. And you can see here I my cap is hundred percent dead so I need to be on top of him to be able to uh, Nosferatu him to be able to keep my scram on. Uh, fortunately, uh, Ron does come in close here. I mean, he does have an AB scram fit, so 
And he doesn't have a TD. I mean, in theory, he could probably kill me, I guess, if he kited me at 8k the entire time. But luckily, the claw has a, uh, a nice reduction for uh, cap costs for the uh, scram, so you can almost always 100% keep it on, and was able to uh, take him out here. Again, Ron isn't like super experienced with frigates, so you know, <laughs> and it was, again, it was like a really weird fit with like shield extenders and like cap and uh, power diagnostics, but I thought this was like an interesting clip because of, you know, how, like how the fight starts. And this was a, uh, a pretty cool little uh, fight. Came really close to getting a really nice kill. But uh, again, I was flying through uh, through test space. And uh, they were camping me into a pocket where I had the fight with Rom. But they got bored after about 30 minutes of camping me in with two titans. And you know, like 43 Cs or whatever. I, I have really no idea why they camped in an intercept with titans. But it's test alliance, so... Anyway, here I'm uh, I'm trying to get a fight with, a, there's a few ships that Tess do have that I can fight. They had a, a, a Wolf, a Coercer, a Kikimura, they, they, I believe they also had uh, a Confessor too. And these are all ships that I can potentially fight, uh, but they were all like camping a gate with a, a Hell. You can see on the scan there's a, a Warp Disrupt Probe up with, uh, you know, a Hell, Kikimura, Wolf, Coercer camping it. So what, I'm do what I, I did see this Rockle here on the gate by itself, so I decided to just tackle it to try and uh, annoy him, and I go uh, go ahead and just check out the ping to uh, s see what the, the gate campers are doing. Looks like the, uh, the hell ended up leaving. He might have just been traveling through, I don't know. And there's a, a wolf coercer and Kikimura on the gate. So right now I'm just trying to look at the uh, the ships to see what they what they have. I'm looking at the, the wolf and trying to see what guns he has to see if I'm able to fight him. And he does have uh, artillery, so I, I can potentially kill that wolf. Uh, the Coercer too, uh, I'm also taking note that he has an MWD, which is good for me. I, I would not fight a Coercer that had an AB fit, but if he's MWD, then he's probably like MWD point or something. And I should know, I have been in the system for about 5 minutes or so, so... Uh, I've I noticed that there was some uh, NPC miners here, so I, I, you know, I dropped a can at zero and bookmarked it, and trying to attempt to get these guys to come off to see if they would fight me and it looks like the coercer potentially might be following me here i don't actually need the npc miners for the coercer itself but if his uh, friends come in there was also some heavier stuff too like a dracovic for example so uh, here, here's the fire with uh, the coercer the, the claw actually has a fantastic signature radius it only has a 30 meter sig which is one of the lowest in the game I believe, I think it is the lowest for a frigate, the only thing that's lower than it are like shuttles and capsules etc. So I'm able to orbit this guy at 500 and uh, take him out without him being able to uh, apply almost any damage to me. You see he is getting glancing hits there but with his uh, beam lasers, the Corsa does still have like a really big tracking bonus and he did double click in space but able to take him out. The Clora also has pretty respectable resists here too. Uh, the NPC miners start spawning and I see the Kikimura on uh, D-Scan coming in. The Kuosa called his friend for help. But before she has the Kuosa lands, the uh, the NPC miners like despawn. I, I think I can go for the uh, Kikimura here but then the Kuosa lands and here I think I probably should have disengaged. But the, like a, a Kikimura landing on my Clora at zero was like kind of too good of a... <laughs> of a of something to go for I guess. Um, the Kikimura actually doesn't do uh, much damage to me at all in this fight and it's almost entirely the Confessor. Uh, I'll probably bring up the mail at the end of this video to show you but, but uh, and I go down here but that Kikimura is pretty close to going down and the yeah, NVC miners come back here just you know too late to really do anything and the Kuesa uh, whoops off already. Unfortunately I don't think the Kikimura died to the uh, Phantasm NPCs. But yeah, you can see that the Kikimura actually did uh, almost no damage. In fact, the rats actually in that fight did uh, a lot more damage than the Kikimura. So I was actually able to evade a lot of his damage. And I think if the co the, co the Confessor wasn't there that did by far the most damage, probably would have been able to actually take down that Kikimura with a claw, which would be uh, pretty funny. Uh, I thought I would just include this clip of our com commentary just to show you guys how good Test Alliance are at this game.
this final fight here is against the Dramio. Now normally I would not engage Dramio at all in a claw. I think there's almost no way that you can win unfortunately even with the buff but I saw he was going like over 7k a second so I thought he would probably have like a pretty bad fit with like two overdrive injectors or something. So I decided to go for him. He does he does actually have a pretty a decent brawling fit though but he has like really high base speed and you can see here the weakness of the claw is that uh, he can effect effectively like just scram kite me away here although he's doing pretty bad damage here uh, in theory this Dramiel should be able to just hold me uh, permanently at 7-8 kilometers right and use the fact that he has a fall off bonus and I don't to just whittle me down over time and of course his drones also uh, you know always doing damage to me regardless of where he actually is although he does come back in close here after I catch up to him again I start taking a lot of damage and that's actually because he had hail loaded and uh, the claw fit that I'm using has like really low explosive and kinetic uh, resistances so it actually ends up being like super super close here you can see here I win the fight like it with structure with uh, just uh, a few uh, ancillary charges left but that's a pretty fun fight and you know, checking to see, checking to see uh, base speeds on on frigates is a good way to see it, how uh, combat effective they are and again like as I predicted he ended up having like two speed mods fitted so if he had like a, a gyro stabilizer and like maybe another module there uh, definitely would have lost that fight in a way thanks for watching guys uh, really appreciate if you were subscribed to my channel so you can get notifications whenever I don't upload a video in months. <laughs> Joking aside though man, I, I hope you enjoyed the video and I uh, hope you guys have been having success with the newly balanced combat interceptors. I still don't think they're really worth flying with the navy frigates myself. Uh, even with the damage buffs, I still think that I'd rather be in a dual prop fire tail than a claw in most cases and the same fire tail is also cheaper than the claw. And I imagine that's probably true for almost all of the other interceptors compared to the navy faction frigate variants. But hey, it's cool that CCP buffed this class after they lost the nullification and maybe that CCP can give them a few more buffs in the future, who knows.